This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a horror sci-fi film called Come True. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In a gloomy mountain, a dreary cavern lies within where a door opens, leading towards a hunched figure. Sarah Dunn gasps awake on a playground slide. Carrying her sleeping bag, she heads to her house and waits for her mother to leave before sneaking in. Inside, she hardly showers and eats breakfast before riding to school. During class, Sarah struggles to concentrate as she fights her drowsiness. Later, she meets with her friend Zoe, who tells Sarah that she still needs to get her mother's approval for a sleepover. Sarah later heads to her house, but she sees her mother's car on the driveway. She enters her room through the window and retrieves her sleeping bag. Her mother hears her and calls for her, but she has already escaped. Sarah returns to the playground and sleeps on the slide. She dreams of a dark land where she enters a door into a seemingly endless labyrinth, approaching a humanoid figure. Sarah jerks awake in her classroom while her classmates snicker behind her. She meets Zoe in the coffee shop, where she later finds a leaflet about a sleep study that pays the subjects hourly. She heads to the facility where Anita, performs a routine check and asks about Sarah's sleeping habits. Sarah admits that she has been experiencing difficulty sleeping and that she used to sleepwalk when she was a kid. When Anita checks her blood pressure, Sarah confirms when Anita asks if she'll be able to attend the two-month sleep study. Sarah will be hooked into a machine for monitoring and asked questions in the morning. Anita explains further that she will just lie there during REM or rapid eye movement, which is when a person dreams vividly. Later that night, Sarah sleeps at Zoe's and revels at sleeping in an actual bed. Eventually, Sarah falls asleep and dreams of traversing into a dreary cavern. She enters a portal patterned with seemingly tangled fingers and passes through distorting humanoid figures. As she enters a room, the porthole ahead reveals the shadow figure. The next day, Sarah sleeps in the sleep facility's lobby with the other volunteer subjects. Will wonders if Sarah is the only girl in the study, but Sarah clarifies that there is another named Emily. Sarah shares that it's her first time in a sleep study, and the men share that most of them have signed up before. Will adds he has been coming there since he was five, while Aaron started when he was 16. Aaron scoffs and states that Dr. Mayer, the head facilitator of the study, must love watching them sleep. Later, Sarah wears a white bodysuit with cords in her assigned room, which Anita explains allows them to monitor her sleep in the control room. Anita assists Sarah into her headset and soon after, Emily enters the room. Sarah asks Anita how many they are in the study, and Anita answers there are two females and four males. Emily wonders why there's a larger ratio of males, but Anita claims it's confidential. When Sarah asks about their study's purpose, Anita claims it's also confidential. Just then, Michael and Lyle enter the room and offer assistance to Anita. After quick adjustments in the control panel beside Sarah's bed, Michael gives an OK sign towards the camera, which blinks in acknowledgement. In the control room, Dr. Mayer arrives and asks the person behind the computer how long before they're ready to monitor, to which the person answers that it'll be for another hour. Later, Mayer explains the stages of sleep, wherein stage 1 starts when the eyes close and the consciousness is between wakefulness. It's also usually when hypnic myoclonia occurs, which is the feeling of falling during the first few minutes of sleep. In stage 2, Mayer motions to the monitors displaying peaks and valleys, indicating the body's preparation for deep sleep. Later, Mayer signals stage 3 as the sleepers are in deep sleep. He declares they'll wait because they'll see activity in REM in a moment. Soon enough, Mayer points to a particular monitor and asks whose feet it belongs, to which Anita responds that it's Sarah's. In the morning, Anita asks how her sleep went. Sarah enthusiastically admits that she feels well-rested compared to her other nights. Later in Mayer's office, Lyle, Anita, and Michael enter with giddiness as they hand him some files. In a bookstore, Sarah reaches for a book just as a voice behind her encourages her to buy it, mentioning the author's thought-provoking writing. Sarah thanks him for the recommendation and leaves unaware that the man follows her with his gaze. That evening, Sarah watches a movie at the cinema with Zoe when she notices the man from the bookstore arrive and take his seat. When they exit the cinema, Sarah suggests they walk in the opposite direction because she doesn't want another encounter with the man. Later in the sleep clinic, Lyle helps Sarah settle. When Sarah notices that Emily isn't there, Lyle responds that she's either late or dropped out of the study, which is the most common scenario. After Lyle leaves, Sarah readies for sleep and notices the active camera from where a man watches 
notices her in the control room. Sarah dreams of a great toned room with flickering lights illuminating several hanging humanoid figures. She hastens towards a passage where a cloak-like figure materializes. Then, she enters a confined room when she encounters a strange statue and gasps awake. She glances beside her and notices Emily's empty bed. The man in the control room sits up in attention and watches her intently. In the morning, Anita shows Sarah some photos to which Sarah seems bothered but denies any recognition. When Anita takes notes, Sarah leans to focus on the recent photo and describes it as hands that seem to be holding something. After a moment, Sarah finally asks Anita if Emily is still in their study but Anita just explains that it's common for the participants to leave. Anita attempts to explain further, but Michael cuts her off, urging them to proceed so he can sleep. After glancing at Michael meaningfully, Anita places another picture and studies Sarah's reaction. Sarah stares at the picture and then suddenly starts seizing. Anita orders Michael to fetch Riff as the picture reveals the shadow figure from Sarah's nightmares. Soon, Riff rushes in from the control room and Sarah recognizes him as the man she met in the bookstore. Later, Riff claims he's not following her, but Sarah angrily confronts him for stalking and watching her sleep. Riff implores her not to quit their study on account of his actions. Sarah argues that she's quitting not because of him but because she had the worst panic attack, and still they remain tight-lipped. Mayer watches the footage later and reprimands Anita for showing Sarah the pictures. Anita reasons that they just wanted to know if the sleeper remembers what they dreamt about. Mayer reprimands Anita that they must collect data like scientists and follow ethical guidelines. While at the laundromat, Sarah answers a call from Zoe, but no one speaks from the other line. Suddenly, she hears creaking noises from above, and as she looks up, Sarah convulses before passing out. Sarah is awakened by an elderly woman who says some boys took something from her. When she realizes that they took her phone, she dashes out but sees no sign of the thieves. She rides hurriedly to Zoe's house, but there's no sign of her. In the evening, Sarah waits in front of the facility and calls Riff when he arrives. Sarah bargains not to quit the study if Riff reveals their purpose. As Riff tries to argue, Sarah confesses that she's getting scared because the picture they showed her in the morning triggered something weird in her. Riff reasons that if he shows her what they're doing, it will compromise their results. Sarah points out that if she leaves, it'll likely compromise their study further, so Riff finally agrees. In his office, Riff makes Sarah promise confidentiality before putting on a headgear attached to a machine. As Riff explains a neuroscientist's discovery of decoding images from their brain, he demonstrates the process. The monitor next to them shows exactly what Riff sees, which amazes Sarah. Riff thought of applying the invention to see something more extraordinary, and Sarah deduces that they have been watching the sleeper's dreams. Riff leads Sarah into the control room where they view a sleeper's recording from the previous night. Riff clarifies he can't show hers because of her previous reaction. They look on with fascination as the screen displays unique patterns that depict the brain's activity. When Riff states that the sleeper had a nightmare, the screen displays eerie surroundings, traversing through a dark pathway until it focuses on a terrifying face. Riff stops the video while Sarah frowns and wonders if her dreams are also terrifying. Riff affirms but points out that everyone has nightmares. Sarah is aggravated and accuses Riff of watching something they shouldn't. Riff responds that he's doing it for a reason but before he can elaborate, they hear footsteps approaching, so Riff leads Sarah out. Later that night, when Sarah sleeps, she traverses through a door then spirals down a concrete staircase. She enters a manhole and sees the same humanoid shadow figure, but this time, it raises its head and reveals its glowing eyes. In the control room, Riff stares at it intently and adjusts the controls to magnify the image, catching the other's attention. When Anita wonders at the event, Riff explains that the sleepers have unique narrative episodes but eventually dream of the same shadow figure. The motions display the same image as Sarah and the other sleepers twitch in their nightmarish sleep. Riff confesses that he has also seen the figure in his nightmare since he was six. He states that there are countless records about the shadows, but people People always discount them as just dreams. As Riff magnifies the image further, Sarah suddenly convulses and wakes up gasping for breath. Anita goes into her room and checks on Sarah. Feeling vulnerable, Sarah snaps at her and reveals she knows about their study as she hurriedly dresses. When Sarah moves to leave, Anita points at her bleeding eye. Sarah runs in fear as Riff chases after her. Riff drives around as he scans the street for Sarah until he spots her parking her bike. Sarah runs into a club in search of Zoe. 
Meanwhile, at the laboratory, Lyle notices that one of the sleepers is waking up, who Michael verifies as Will. Soon, Aaron wakes as well. Anita reckons something is happening and orders Lyle to call Riff just as Mayer arrives. Sarah searches through the crowd for Zoe in the club, but sees no sign of her. Sarah hyperventilates and dashes into the bathroom. Back in the lab, when Mayer asks for Riff's whereabouts, Anita makes up a cover story. Mayer is disappointed since he doesn't want Riff to miss out on what they are witnessing. Just then, Will and Aaron enter a semi-conscious state and stare with terrified eyes at the corner where the monitors reveal the appearance of the shadow figures. Meanwhile, Riff finds an unconscious Sarah slumped on the bathroom floor at the club, then carries her out. As Will and Aaron succumb to sleep paralysis, the scientists watch the monitors. Michael is bothered at letting them experience the terror, but Mayer asserts that they need the data to understand the unified fear of the shadow with eyes. Later, the scientists watch in dread as the apparitions seem to move and enter the waking world. The two sleeper seizures intensify and suddenly sit in sync, their eyes turning completely white. The monitors black out as Mayer stares blankly at them. In a room with several peculiar figures, a spotlight illuminates a painted square in the wall. Behind the wall is an eerie, seemingly alive passage that ends at a chapel. Inside the chapel is carnage on the dark lands where the shadow figure stands. Sarah wakes up and finds herself in an unfamiliar apartment. She walks towards the window and sees herself wearing an eye patch in the reflection. She removes the eye patch in the bathroom and gasps at her bloodshot eye. She wanders to a room where she finds Riff strapped into his bed while attached to the monitoring device. Sarah follows the wire's path and uncovers the monitors where she watches Riff dream of them together, laughing as they grow fangs and kiss. Afterward, Sarah witnesses Riff's nightmare when the monitor reveals the familiar shadow figure while Riff enters the semi-conscious state. When the figure reaches out to Riff, Sarah runs to his bedroom and shakes him awake. Later, Sarah and Riff settle in a cafe where Riff stares at her. Feeling uncomfortable, Sarah excuses herself to the bathroom where she removes her eye patch and sees her eyes and bloodshot anymore. When she returns to their table, she asks Riff if she could sleep over because she lost her phone and has nowhere else to go. Riff willingly agrees. On their drive back, Sarah confesses that she saw Riff's dreams of her, leading to a central coupling. In the throes of their passion, Sarah sees two shadow apparitions behind Riff and passes out. Riff takes her into the hospital and anxiously waits while Sarah undergoes a CT scan. Behind a shadow figure that breaks is a dark hallway littered with silhouettes of humanoid figures. A phone rings as the sealed door opens, revealing a humanoid inside. Then, in an eerie hallway, the light flashes and a multi-limbed figure suddenly appears. Riff gasps awake, then notices that Sarah isn't in her bed. Riff runs along the hospital hallway, then frantically asks the front desk nurse for help. The nurse asks him to calm down and calls the nurse stationed at Sarah's room. Riff tries to argue but controls his temper when the security personnel approaches. When no one answers her call, the nurse asks the security personnel for assistance and urges Riff to sit down. Anxious, Riff stands and positions himself beside the security room's open door where he spots Sarah on the security footage. Riff chases after her and realizes that she's sleepwalking. He tries to wake her up but Sarah merely whimpers and her eyes bleed out. Riff calls Anita for help but Anita is furious at him for messing up their study. When Riff mentions that something has happened to Sarah, Anita concedes but declares it's the last favor she'll do for him. Anita gathers their equipment while Riff follows Sarah across empty roads, keeping her safe. Anita soon catches up to them and they plug Sarah into the dream monitoring device. When the monitor reveals a dark place, Riff declares that Sarah's in a nightmare. He lets Anita monitor as he walks with Sarah to protect her. They follow Sarah's path and plan to wake her at her nightmare's peak as Riff believes she'll wake because the body rejects death in dreams. Sarah leads them into the woods. Then a while later, Anita sees the several shadow figures ahead of them on the monitor. They continue walking until the monitor indicates that a large structure is in front of them with the doorway where Sarah is heading. Just as a terrified Anita declares that she can't continue, a phone suddenly rings. Riff follows the sound and sees the phone with an incoming call. Before Sarah can step further into the doorway, Riff answers the call, then Sarah snaps awake and drops to her knees. Riff immediately runs to her side and cradles her as he apologizes that they couldn't wake her. The trio walks back while Sarah slumps to Riff's side. Anita looks around and asks Riff if they're on the right path. When Riff pulls out the phone he found, Sarah recognizes it as hers and asks Riff where he found it. Riff tells her it was on the fields, which puzzles Sarah because she was never there. Anita attempts to rationalize it, but Sarah cuts her off and asks what time it is. Then her phone glitches and shows 10.01. Riff checks his watch and cusses as it shows the same. Suddenly, they hear rustling sounds from the darkness and turn towards it. 
Sarah watches in dread as several pairs of glowing eyes materialize. The trio runs, but Anita gets sucked in by the darkness. Riff soon gets pulled into the darkness as well. Realizing she's alone, Sarah stops running and gawks fearfully around. Then, she comes face to face with the shadow being and wakes up in a gasp. She finds herself over Riff's dead body, pulling her hands away from his gouged eyes. Sarah walks to the bathroom and stares at her blood-spattered reflection in anguish. She turns abruptly towards her phone when it alerts her an incoming image. Sarah's forehead nods in confusion as she reads, then places the phone back. She stares in the mirror and laughs incredulously as she notices that she has grown fangs. According to the message, Sarah has been in a coma for 20 years. They are testing a new technique on her and are urging her to wake up. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.